Hello, welcome to episode 76 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today's the 25th of July. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I spoke to you. Um, it's been rather hot here, I hope it's not been too hot for you guys. Um, we haven't got air conditioning in our house so it's a, sometimes a bit of a struggle but it's okay, we've got windows that open. <laughs> Um, so you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find all things that I've made um, including project bags and hand dyed yarn um, as well as the show notes for this podcast. So to find the show notes you need to go to the website. So if you go to the menu on the top left hand side of the page and click blog and show notes you'll be able to find the show notes from all the podcasts if you want to and it's all in date order so you should be able to find whatever you need there. If not drop me a note uh, drop me a, drop me a question in the down bar and I'll try and help you as much as I can so we had a meet up on Sunday it was brilliant I actually didn't end up taking any footage because I don't think anyone fancied being in, being filmed because we were in a really really warm room we were so hot <laughs> so we think we're gonna have to find another venue especially because it was quite dark as well so not ideal for the winter months really um, but it was wonderful to meet up with everybody I have a photograph so I shall pop it in here and I did manage to chop Julie off who's from um, Suffolk Socks so I'm really sorry Julie so um, I'm going to get some good footage of you at the Fibre East Festival that I'm going to this weekend so watch out for that I started watching Julie's podcast which I hadn't seen before and I can't believe I hadn't watched it before I had actually had a few people say to me "Have you? do you watch um, Julie's podcast? But I hadn't but you should um, she's Suffolk Socks and I'll leave a link in the show notes to her um, podcast as well so we're planning on having another meetup, which I think will probably be on the 6th of October, um, which is another Sunday, which turns out to be the best day for most people that came at least to this weekend's one. And um, Teresa suggested that we should call it Barbara's Day Out, which I think is a brilliant name. So I'm going to stick with that. <laughs> so the next Barbara's Day Out will be on the 6th of October. I haven't decided on a venue yet, I need to look into it a little bit more, um, but we've got a little while yet, so no rush about that. If, if anyone has any suggestions, I'd love to hear those. We've got the summer sock along going on at the moment in the Ravelry group, um, which means you can knit any sock, adult, any adult size sock at all, even if you've already done one sock already before the sock along started, come and join in. Um, we've got a finished objects thread and a discussion thread, and I will be drawing for prizes for both. Um, now I've received another lovely prize for the sock along um, from a lovely friend called Josie whose Beaches and Birds song um, on Etsy and on Instagram if you want to find her and she sent me these two lovely prizes for you guys so first of all I'll show you the full skein so this is a beautiful pink um, it's like a, a muted pink tones with flashes of bright pink in there really pretty um, so this is sea and enemy and it's in a 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon base and that's really pretty so thank you very much Josie that's really lovely of you and we've got a second thing so there's five 20 gram minis there which comes to 100 grams um, and they're in the summer 2019 mini set collection and the colourways are sunny day which I assume is the lovely bright yellow a crab bit my toe I assume is the orangey shades um, paddling which I think is this turquoisey blue colour um, seaweed in my hair which I assume is the green lovely tonal green colours there and 99 ice cream cone and you can see sort of the chocolate and the cone colour and the creamy colour of the ice cream there so isn't that a lovely little set and it comes with a little um, stitch marker progress creeper I should say as well so thank you ever so much Josie so Josie's got a new Etsy shop and I've I've have a screenshot of her Etsy shop, which I'll pop up now. Um, so go over to her um, new Etsy shop and check out all her lovely pretty yarns. I'll leave links in the show notes to her Etsy shop and Instagram page as well. Um, so I, but I thought, isn't that a lovely name, name Beaches and Birds song? Perfect. <laughs> so today we've got some knitting, some quilting, some sewing, some bobbin lace. I've got the blast from the past, which is the last of my nanny's garments. Um, I have some guilt-free confessions though I must add 
I have a shop update um, information which is Friday at seven o'clock um, so let's get on with the good stuff let's start with the knitting set. so last week I uploaded a video on how I did my true afterthought heel and this is the sock that I used in the video um, so I had tubes that I'd created um, from one big long sock tube which I also had put a tutorial on the week before that um, and I haven't actually done the other heel for the other sock how naughty <laughs> so the yarns I used were a lovely twisted Limone self-striping sock yarn in the neon splash colourway and then I used some of my undyed um, merino nylon 7525 base to do the heels and the cuffs on these ones and the toes um, because I always think that if it's self-striping it's nice to have a contrast colour and that matches in nicely with the cream stripe on um, the twisted Limone sock yarn. So lovely. I finished one of those and I haven't done the other ones or there's three in total because I'd made four, I'm well in the process of making four socks out of a sock tube. But I only got round to doing that one. Oh dear. I really have to get a wiggle on on my sock knitting. So secondly, I've just finished knitting my sock tube ready to make a pair of socks um, that I started last week. So I did a crocheted provisional cast on um, so that I could sort of see how the stripes were going so then I could decide how I was going to cut it afterwards. And I haven't quite decided on where I'm going to cut it yet because um, here, I don't know if you can see that there's a double repeat in one of the colour changes because there was a, a break in the yarn or a knot in the yarn. So. I'm going to have a bit of a think about that and work out where to put my heels and toes etc. But the yarn for this one is a Berger de France um, in the Imprim Beige colourway. Um, so there's the little tag and it's the Berger de France um, lovely sock base. So it's I think it's called Groomy 50. So this is a 75% wool 25% polyamide uh, mix and th I think that this is slightly thicker than quite a few commercial sock yarns I was really pleased with how this sort of knitted up I used 2.75 millimeter needles um, for this one and I think I might do like a coral for heels and toes I'm not sure yet though so but that's another whole tube done um, I do like lots of plain knitting when I'm sort of knitting and chatting with people so that I don't have to think too much. I've done lots of knitting and chatting over the weekend so hence lots of sock tube. I have found I've got another one of these Berger de France um, Groomy 50 balls um, in my stash so I might do the same with this one next and this is the Imprint Joie. I've rubbish at pronouncing things so that's what it's that's what the um, label said it's called and I picked this up ages ago I think from the knitting and stitching show if I can remember correctly and I just picked up one one of this and one of the one I've knitted um, so that I could just knit one pair of socks and do contrast heels and toes might do grey heels and toes with this one but I'm thinking I'll do the same and knit another tube out of this yarn so that's another sock tube on the needles I'm going crazy for the socks at the moment <laughs> So third on the needles is my Pebbles and Pathways socks by Mars from the Hay Brown Berry podcast and I've come along a little way I think I've probably done from there since the last podcast so I haven't done a huge amount but don't those cables look lovely Ooh. <laughs> Oh dear. So um, this is the top of the foot and it's a toe up sock and then it's plain on the back for where your foot's going to be in contact with the floor. I'm almost at the bit where I'm sort of doing the heel bit so a very exciting bit next. Um, the yarn that I'm using is my The Way You Make Me Feel colourway on my BFL nylon base so it's 80% BFL and 20% nylon. It's slightly thicker than the other bases I've got so I've used uh, 2.75 millimetre needles um, for this with 60 stitches and um, that takes into account the cables as well so with this um, uh, BFL yarn because it's slightly thicker I normally use 2.75 millimeter needles and 56 stitches for Adam um, so normally on my other yarns I'll tend to go for um, 60 64 stitches uh, with the same needles so because it's thicker I can get away with doing less stitches which is sometimes nice <laughs> 
Um, so there we are, that's how they're coming along and that's how the yarn looks in the cake. So that's my third sort of sock project on the go and I have several sock tubes that I have to um, split into a couple of pairs of socks but I need to get my act together and get those sorted so that I can actually um, get those into my FO pile. I've not at actually finished objects in my knitting section for several weeks now which is terrible <laughs> but I have to show you my cozy memories blanket so I've done three or four, maybe four squares on this this week I haven't actually sewn my ends in this week which is very naughty I normally sew them in as I go but for some reason I took my needle out of my bag so then um, I'm going to have to put it back in so that I don't neglect my ends. So you can see all my ends hanging everywhere. So I've done these four squares this week. So this one at the top is a lovely beige base with speckles of different colours in. And it is the Bear and Sheep's Clothing on the BFL sock base. And the colourway is NYE. Isn't that lovely? Really enjoyed knitting that one. A nice subtle colour. Then secondly, oh, my blanket's falling off my knees already. Secondly, look at this lovely deep turquoisey colour. And this is called, um, no, sorry. This is by the yarn dyer All, All Wool That Ends Well. Lovely title. <laughs> and it's in the colourway Tidal. Isn't that pretty? It's got flecks of green and darker blue in there. That is beautiful. I love that. Absolutely gorgeous that is. Um, thirdly, I've got this beautiful multicoloured yarn by Studio C and it's in the colour Playtime. Isn't that gorgeous? And then last but not least, gorgeous purple with flecks of bright yellow in. I actually knitted this last night and it was quite dark so I didn't really appreciate how lovely bright those speckly bits are. This is in a River Knits yarn. Um, it's a blue faced Leicester base, four pie base, and it's called Yarn Over Supernova. Isn't that gorgeous? So, four lovely, lovely colourways. And these were a little swap with my friends Julie and Elsie. Hi, Julie and Elsie! <laughs> um, I've actually finally got to putting them on my blanket, and I've got a few more as well from that swap. So that's my cosy Bumbus blanket this week. I won't show you the whole thing, because it hasn't grown very much. That's all my knitting. I'm neglecting my knitting this week um, and for the last several weeks because I've been working on some patterns. So hopefully next week I'll be able to show you them and they'll be released very, very soon. So watch out for that. So the next thing on my list is my quilting section. And I have actually, last week, I completely forgot to show you this, <laughs> which is ridiculous really. So I've actually finished the wall hanging I was working on, except I haven't bound it. Um, so this is inspired by the Japanese cherry blossom and I thought I'd combine that with some kimonos which is a beautiful um, method of folding the fabric into a kimono shape and then I made up this um, foundation pieced bamboo block so I think since last time I've added these leaves on here which were done as the same method as I did my cherry blossom flowers where I used um, heat and bond, ironed that onto one piece of fabric then attached that to a second piece of fabric so I'd got fabric, heat and bond fabric so it's a sandwich, I cut those out into flowers or leaf shapes and then I've sewn those onto the background um, using a bead on the front to sort of tether it without being able to see um, any stitch marks if that makes sense. For these ones here I've used um, tubular beads to make it sort of look part of the leaf and for the flowers I've used little seed beads. I bought these these little seed beads here, these pink ones, um, from a shop called Crystals and Ice and I actually showed them in the packet a couple of weeks ago that I'd ordered online. Um, since the last time I showed you this I decided that the tree wasn't it doesn't show up enough so I actually went over with free motion again and made it more obvious that the actual tree was there um, with some sort of shaping um, inside so it looks like a twisty um, tree shape. I've also changed the colour of the kimonos that I've put on the front so I wanted a darker one um, to sort of balance out the colours on the 
piece a little bit better and then I just changed this lighter one to the same fabric as this down here rather than the same one as this because it was it was too close to that bar um, also what I thought that was the the white fabric that I used for the flowers here it was a little bit bright white so I just went with a watercolour pencil and I just shaded them in slightly to give them a bit more of a tinge of pink so there we go obviously it's you can see the wadding on the back still I'm gonna have to back it and put some binding on there um, to finish it off so hopefully finish that by next week I always say this about this project <laughs> so that's that one and we're now on to my sewing section so I'll have to get Barbara to come over this week come on Barbara show us what you've got on thank you Barbara if you've noticed um, Barbara is still set to my nanny's size because I've got this skirt to show you a bit later on so I'm just going to leave her that size for now you can see more or less how the t-shirt looks except I fill it out quite a bit more <laughs> So this is at the pattern called the Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons and I've made this top so many times. It's um, something I know fits really well and I just thought that'll do. That's the pattern I'm going to use. Um, the only thing I changed about the pattern is I did actually make the neck band slightly wider for a change just to see how that worked out. And I took an extra half inch off the neck band um, when I was sewing that just so that um, it cinched in slightly more. Um, I'd adjusted the Agnes pattern so that I have this length of sleeve um, because it comes with one that goes to the elbow um, so I'd adjusted it to make one that's just a little bit shorter um, because I'm not I don't think it's very flattering on me so that's why I'd chosen that and I'd already cut um, the pattern to that sort of shape um, sleeve before and I just copied it basically another top in the same shape <laughs> This fabric is absolutely gorgeous. It's a beautiful, bright floral print that I picked up from a shop which I can't remember. I'm going to have to look it up. Um, I'm, I'll have to look at my receipts somewhere to see if I can find it. So if I find what shop I got it from, I'll pop the name in the show notes for you. But it's a really nice um, art gallery fabric. Um, and they always have a lovely, really nice base of stretch jersey. And it's a, um, a cotton and spandex mix. And I think that's going to wear really nicely. So if I just turn Barbara around, even though she's a bit squeaky, <laughs> um, you can see what the back looks like. And it's just one of the standard sort of Agnes um, shape tops. But I'm really pleased with that one. So thank you very much, Barbara. I'm sure you'll be back later to show Nanny's skirt that you've got on. So now onto my bobbin lace section. So if you watch me on Instagram, you'll know that I um, had been working on my swan and I've now unpinned it off the cushion and I need to mount it onto something. So my thoughts are that I was going to actually mount this onto some beautiful hand dyed fabric and do some stitching on. So there we go. You can see that there, there's some ends that I'm going to thread through the back of the fabric and get rid of um, so that it won't take away from the um, actual image itself. So most of the swan is done in a whole stitch where it's more densely woven and then there's half stitch on the wing. I use the leaf technique to do the beak. So there we go. Um, hopefully I'll decide what to mount it on um, soon. I tend to leave things a little while before I decide to mount them. So I've also actually finished and mounted a piece of bobbin lace as well. Um, this is going to be more difficult to show you because there is glass in front of it. Just I'll keep it at this sort of angle so that you can see it a little bit better. Um, you can see the reflection of the camera in there as well. Um, so I've completely mounted that and I wanted it to have glass in front to stop the dust getting on it. So I got this frame from Ikea and I think it was about £4, um, these box frames. I think they're really good quality for their price as well. And the pattern was taken from this book, um, Modern Bobbin Lace, and it's the piece on the front. And I've obviously done it in blues instead of the pinks that they've used here. And I've used um, Finca Silks. I'm thinking that I might actually do two more of these for my bathroom wall and I was looking at this page showing you all the different designs and I think I've decided on this one here um, and I think this one yeah so this one and this one and the, those three and well those two and the one I've done um, I'm planning on putting them across the wall, wall above the bath thought that might be quite nice um, not that anybody will probably notice them up there <laughs> 
So that's my Bob Inlay. So what have we got next? We've got Blast from the past, so we'll have to get Barbara back in. Thank you, Barbara. Barbara's obviously feeling a bit hot. She's had to tie her T-shirt up. <laughs> so this skirt was made by my auntie for my nanny. And, and this is the last of um, my nanny's garments that I'm going to show you. So um, just to explain one last time, I'd inherited a lot of the garments that were all handmade that my nanny used to wear. Um, so I've been showing you guys because there's some interesting modifications that had been done. Mainly the sewing was done by my Auntie Norma, um, but I think that my nanny used to do some of the sewing herself as well. So finally, a lot of them were dresses, but she actually did have this one skirt in the in the stash that she, um, well, at least I've got hold of. And it's a really nice, simple A-line skirt, skirt with a baseband. Um, and it's made of four panels, two at the front, two at the back. Um, with a lap over and a button fastening at the top here with a concealed zip and I just think that's absolutely gorgeous it's made me think why don't I make myself a nice simple skirt like this so the fabric she used was a wool blend I think um, that's what I can tell from just looking at it um, it's not lined but I can imagine it'd be quite a hot skirt um, to have if, it, if it's completely lined so she's got overlocked hems there and it's just made beautifully and it's a gorgeous sort of burgundy and pink sort of mixture of um, yarns that have been used in that weave but there we go thank you very much Barbara so now we have my I've been very good really. <laughs> so after we talked about using cotton sock yarn um, in replacement of wool to see if it was cooler or whether be that would be a good alternative for people who are allergic to wool for instance. Alison from Alison Busy Bee on Instagram contacted me to say she'd got a little bit of um, Regia sock yarn which is made from cotton that she got left over from her pair of socks. And this looks practically like a whole ball, Alison. <laughs> so Alison really kindly sent me a little contrast red and this nearly full skein of regia. And this has got a cotton mix, so let's have a look. Let me read it out to you. So it's 72% cotton, 18% polyamide, and 10% polyester. So it's got quite a high cotton um, percentage there and it's in the colourway um, Tutti Fruity 2 but it looks like a watermelon if you look on the picture carefully absolutely gorgeous colours so that will be a brilliant way to sort of try my first go at some cotton socks thank you ever so much Alison that was really kind and she sent me the most gorgeous card look doesn't that want you make you want to eat um, scones and tea Um, so thank you so much Alison. So the last section for today is shop update. So there'll be a shop update Friday the 26th of July at 7pm. Um, so I'm just doing an update every Friday now at 7 o'clock and these are some of the yarns that will be going in the shop. I have some English Country Garden which is a pale blue with some really delicate speckles of purples and pinks and greens in there um, which I designed for the sock pattern. I've got some Over the Rainbow which is a micro striping yarn where you'll get um, different colours of the rainbow interspersed with the plain blue um, for the sky and that's generally a sock yarn really if you do it um, in something that isn't a larger circumference than a sock you, you might get some different pooling if you're into um, pooling and I've also got Sweet Dreams, which is a really delicate um, cream base with some pink, blue, um, yellow and green in there as well. So those will be in the shop, as well as I'm updating some of the Notions pouches and DPN cases as well. I'm um, trying to keep top up the shop all the time so that there's things available for you all the time so you're not in a rush um, in the updates too much. Um, so I think that's enough for this week. Um, I hope to see you next week and I will also be planning on uploading uh, a little vlog video of my visit to Fibre East. I will be going to Fibre East on both the Saturday and Sunday this weekend. 
weekend so I hope to see you there so don't forget to come and say hi there um, very exciting I've got um, lots of ideas of things to purchase <laughs> maybe a few confessions next week <laughs> Um, so watch out for that um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast if you want to see more um, don't forget subscribing and liking doesn't cost anything it just um, helps support my podcast and draw more viewers here thank you for watching see you next week bye